Hey, this is Man Made Mead. Welcome to Mead Mythbusters. Today we're testing the theory that putting your fruit in a bag is more effective than putting your fruit just in a normal mead. So let's get started. All right, so. I am using a classic recipe for my world. I make a lot of apple meads um, because they're just naturally pretty good and so they're easy to make. So what I'm testing today is this theory. Uh, we know that if you put your fruit or let's say any other ingredients in a mead um, in a bag, it's easier to pull out of the mead. That's already a fact. Now, the thing I'm testing, the theory I wanna test is whether or not the bagged fruit give the same flavor impartation, imparting um, as if I were to just put my fruit in regular. So this is the base mead that I've used. This was uh, a traditional mead I made and uh, it has leveled out, it just fermented, it's in the secondary right now. It was at 1.090 gravity. I'll put the recipe here of course to tell you what's all in this traditional mead. Now I've separated out some of it into here. I understand there's lots of headspace. I'll rack this into a new carboy. But um, I have the same amount of mead, of this mead in these two buckets. What I'm gonna be doing is putting these apples, both of these bags are two and a half pounds of apples. And uh, I will be putting one of them into a bag and then tying it off, putting it into the mead. The other one I'm just gonna pour in and uh, let them be on top without, of course, being bagged. What I really wanna see is what happens with the flavor? Is there more flavor imparting that happens because the fruit are loose or um, are they the exact same? So uh, I think this is really interesting and um, hopefully intrigues you some. So I'm not gonna tell you, uh, you've probably made a mead before if you're watching this. If not, um, I have videos online on how to make a mead. Um, so there's those, but what we're gonna do we're going to use, these are both 2.4 pounds of apples, by the way. So these are uh, Fuji apples. And so I'm just going to simply dump these in here. The apples um, I ended up cutting, of course, and then um, uh, freezing. So these have been frozen and then I sanitized them before I put them in because I wanted to make sure that the, uh, um, there's no bad bacteria in there. I will also note that this mead is not um, stabilized or anything, so there's a great chance that the yeast are gonna kick up again and ferment on the sugars from the um, apples. So that might affect the flavor a little bit, but it, this is a, a fair test. So uh, now I'm gonna take and bag this other one. Okay, so I'm gonna take, I'm gonna do this in, these uh, little muslin bags are great for, for this purpose. Set this there, hopefully it doesn't fall in. We're gonna find out. This might not work at all. Yeah, it's falling already. All right, there we go, that worked. Now, get them to the bottom, tie this thing off so no apples can fall out. These uh, bags are also really cheap, which is nice. Okay, so this is part one of the test and um, you're gonna see the end result within this. I'm gonna leave these in here for 14 days and uh, at least 14 days. I'm gonna taste test and see if it's enough apple flavor. Um, but after I'm done, we're gonna test the flavor profile. So this is super simple. The beginning of this is a quick process. My next step, I'm gonna put my lids on and my airlocks on, label them. And then with both of these, I'll come through every probably day or so and just kind of push them down. So, and I'll, I'll do that with this one as well. Just make sure that the fruits stay moist and um, the good news is there's alcohol content already in the mead, so it's kind of protecting from any bad bacteria taking over. But I guarantee you we're gonna see some um, re-fermentation occur. So I'll be back and uh, maybe with some updates or this might be, the next clip might end up being the actual taste test. We're gonna find out. All right, it's been uh, 15 days since we put all the fruit in, the apples in. Let's check out and see what our fruit looks like. I have gone ahead and made sure as time has passed to shake it up a little bit to make sure it doesn't, um, all the fruit are covered. So let's check out the fruit. Okay, as you can see, the fruits still look okay. There's no mold, there's nothing on them that's concerning. Obviously this is the one that the fruit was dispersed throughout it and this is our bag. 
Um, the perk of the bag side is, um, since I'm pulling these off now to do a taste test here in a moment, all I have to do right for this is take and find the top of my bag, lift it up, let it drain for a second so that we get some of our juices or some of our mead back, and then throw it right in. Um, so this is one reason I like using a bag because I can just do this and it's done. All the fruit's out. This one I'm gonna have to do a little scooping. So let me scoop this fruit out and then I'm gonna rack it into a new container um, and then we'll do a taste test. Okay, so I've gone ahead and moved them out. You can see they both look pretty similar. The one thing I will note is that this one that had the not bagged fruit actually has some more chunks at the bottom of the fruit. And of course this one that had uh, the bag held onto those chunks. So that's kind of one perk. You get a little less sediment with an, a bagged situation, but not too much. I have moved them into these carboys and I have my tasters. So let's take a quick taste test and see if there's any real difference. Okay, so this is one of the big tests I wanna see within this is whether or not the bagged fruit actually changed the flavor. So in this hand, this is the bagged fruit version that I had. In this hand, this is the not bagged fruit. You can see that as far as looking at them, they are very similar color. They're very similar clarity as well. So um, I'm, you know, not, I don't think that clarity was a, a factor in this, but that'll be part of my test with this. So let's get a taste test of both of them and see. Let's start with the not bagged fruit version. Smelling them, I'm gonna smell them first. They, ooh, that's interesting. This one actually, the not bagged fruit has more of a fruity smell to it, aroma. You get more of the apple. Um, they're both gonna be yeasty smelling and tasting because they're still kind of fresh, to be quite honest with you. So yeah, that one has more of a fruity smell. This one has more of a traditional mead. You don't get as much of the apple, which is interesting. So the not bagged, or sorry, the bagged fruit version has less of an aroma. So I find that um, interesting, first of all. Let's try the bagged version, or not bagged. I'm getting them, I'll make sure and put them in the corners what I'm tasting, but this is the not bagged version. Ooh, I really like that. Um, just the taste of it overall. That is really, that's really good. It has a, um, a very nice rounded apple character that I haven't really gotten before. Honestly, I, um, I mean, I've gotten good apple characters before, but I've had to use like apple juice. This has a good apple character, has a good honey um, character as well. Man, I'm a fan of that. Okay, uh, as far as it has a little bite, I think that's just part of the mead itself, a little yeasty tasting. I think the apple character is very uh, prominent in it, with it, which is important because that's what you want with an apple mead. Um, yeah, okay, that's oh, good. Let me taste test this one. Let me grab a drink of water so I can kind of clean my palate first. Okay, um, I had to drink some water to kind of cleanse my palate. Here's the bagged version. Um, very similar tasting. This one, surprisingly, for some reason is actually a little smoother. I don't necessarily know why that is. You still get a good apple character. The honey character is less prominent now. It's more prominent on the nose. Yeah, I'm, I mean, they, they taste very similar. This one is definitely a little bit smoother. I think the, the biggest thing is there's an aromatic difference for sure. And this has more of a muted apple character to it for some reason. I don't know why the bagged version would, well, I guess um, the, my only hypothesis is that because the fruit were bagged, they didn't get to impart, quote, in the mead as well. Um, but I don't think that's necessarily true. That, like having a more muted apple flavor as compared to this, I don't really know. I mean, it definitely still has, they're very, very similar in that same, in that flavor. The sweetness is there. The apples have retained their sugar. Um, there's definitely still a little bit of a bite. It's just not as heavy. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, going back and forth between them. 
Um, I definitely feel like this is a brighter apple flavor. Um, the I think the apples were able to impart a little more into the mead, and so for whatever reason, there was a difference. There is a difference in flavors. So this is brighter, a brighter apple flavor. This is a more muted apple flavor. It's still there. If I were to give like if this is, you know, eighty percent apple flavor that I want, this thing is like. 65 it's just got some more muted notes but the good one of the good things about the muted notes is that it's a little smoother to drink currently this one has a little more heat on it a little more bite to it so there's definitely a difference in bagging and um i'm this was really interesting to me i did not think there would be a difference to be quite honest i thought that they would be the same thing they'd taste the same but they didn't um so yeah i don't know i'm really interested to see what happens with these um over time and I will continue this test um, with some other factors this is kind of part one of this bagged fruit test but as far as tasting difference there is a difference in that you get more of a you get different flavors within each um, version if I were to pick my favorite I think over time the one that would taste better or will taste better is going to be the um, not bagged version and that is because it has more of an apple character, more in your face apple character, and that will round out over time. It will be less heat, but it will still um, retain the apple flavor. I'd wonder if the muted apple flavor from the bagged version is gonna go away over time. So this is a really interesting test. Uh, if you wanna try it yourself, go ahead and try it with whatever fruit. I wanna say a couple things. This is pretty exclusive right now to at least apples. I don't know if there's a difference between if I used pears or peaches or a kiwi or anything like that, there could be some varietal things that happen. So please don't go, well, this, you know, that's silly because it's just apples. I know it's just apples. And um, I might try this with some other things in the future. But this was really interesting. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, I What I'm going to do in the next episode of this is I will come back and tell you some notes about clarity. And to and really another side of this test is seeing whether or not the bagged fruit provided more clarity over time, like it kept the fruit from, um, you know, mixing in so much that you lose clarity. But I'm definitely interested to see what that is, and you'll see that in the next episodes. And then I'll come back and do a taste test, of course, in the future, and see if the flavor profiles are different. Right now, I prefer the not bagged version, but who knows? Maybe in the future, the bagged version kind of redeems itself more to me. Um, if you found this interesting, make sure to hit like and subscribe because I do lots of videos like this, lots of different content. Um, this video took a couple weeks to do and um, that's why I'm not always able to put out really long videos like this because they do take sometimes weeks to months to finish. Um, but I enjoy this one. I am definitely going to be drinking the rest of these. I'm going to put my corks and everything back on the top of this and I'll put these up here to join my ranks and um, we'll see what happens with them. So thank you guys for watching. Check out my links below to support the channel. Hit like and subscribe. Um, I'll be back with some more content. If you have questions or comments, leave them below. And uh, I'd love to hear what you have to you know, say about this. So see you guys next time. And cheers. <laughs>